Hi, moguls. My name is Austin Kreins. I'm the CEO and founder of Atomics Logistics. When is the last time that you received a package at your doorstep that might have been broken, damaged, missing an item, arrived late, or just didn't arrive at all? Well, in August of 2020, I became obsessed with this seemingly trivial process that is called order fulfillment. See, the year before, I worked at an e-commerce brand, and there's really only two ways to ship your product. You can have your own warehouse, have your own team, your own software, and ship it out of that facility, or you can work with a third-party company. And before I get into the differences of Atomics and other third-party companies, let's walk through the process of order fulfillment. So whether you're a small business or a large business, you sell product online. Your customers go online, they buy the product, and when they hit that buy button, that's when the data is sent to that brand, and then also via an API that is sent to our warehouse management software at Atomics that manages our facility. Then we go through that pick, pack, and shipping process. In that process, we enable our brands to fully customize what they want their unboxing experience to be. And then ultimately, the carrier will deliver that package to your doorstep. The value to the business is they don't have to manage the logistics component. They can focus on other revenue generating and core um, business units. The problem before Atomics was there's really two types of third-party companies. On one hand, you have your mom and pop third-party companies that tend to have great customer care and more one-on-one -on -one support, but they tend to lack modern-day technology. On the other end of the market, you have these venture capital, high-growth uh, technology startups that have thousands of customers, have great innovative software, but tend to lack that customer care, that one-on-one -on -one relationship. So Atomics was born to combine what is great about the customer care of the mom and pop third-party companies and the technology software of these venture capital-backed companies. And our mission from day one has been to change how online businesses launch, grow, and scale by creating a hyper-personalized service provider and also having an intuitive software platform that can manage their logistics for them. Over the past year, we've grown 6,000% and are on pace to hit 6.5 million um, in annual revenue. Is there a specific niche with these ideal customers? Are they a certain business size? Are they small to mid-size? They're not real large? That's kind of... Yeah, so that's, that's a great question. So typically our ICP is going to be uh, brands or businesses that have started in the last five years. Okay. Um, they're going to have two to 20 employees um, on their team. The consumer good that they're selling is typically smaller than a basketball. The average weight of a shipment going out our doors is around two pounds. So think smaller consumer goods. How is your pricing compared to, say, another company that someone like this could hook up with to get their orders out the door? Depending on what the, the ask and the needs are, it tends to be more premium. This is where it comes in for us, where we present kind of options to our clients of saying, hey, if this is the packaging and your kind of SOP for that packaging and the process that you want, here's the pricing. Here's another approach that you could do of either, hey, here's another uh, packaging manufacturer that we think can streamline that process more so then it's almost cheaper with us to go through that process. First of all, 6.5 million in revenue is, is quite impressive. How many employees do you have right now? So we have 43 members on our team. 37 are full-time, six are part-time. What one or two things do you think you've done different than others that have made you successful? I think it comes down to the customer experience that our customers have with us. When I first started this company, my first team members were my mom and uh, grandma, but I was the one that was on Slack. I was talking to them whether it was 6 a.m. or 8 p.m. and I would do whatever they needed. So if, hey, you needed a 20 by 20 by two box, well, I'll go source that. And that's what a lot of these larger companies wouldn't do. It's like, oh, you're shipping 100 items this month? Like, I'm not gonna spend all this effort on it. It was like, oh, perfect. That's how I kind of won our first 10, first 20, first 30. That's a challenge you're gonna face right away. It's keeping the ma and pa flavor as you get bigger and bigger. That's a challenge. Yeah, it, it is, and that's, that's always the, the number one thing on the top of my head is, is how do we scale that customer experience and, and, and this as we 
continue to have ambitions to, to continue to grow. So yeah, that is. What are the top couple things that are going around in your crazy entrepreneurial brain that keeps you up at night? The number one theme right now is is, is kind of thinking of our growth and expansion. So I, I spent uh, about six days of the past two weeks in Phoenix, Arizona. So we're looking of signing a warehouse deal out there of roughly 30, 40,000 square feet, mainly to shorten shipping times. It takes a while I and mean, it's a little more expensive to ship to San Francisco, California. So we're gonna get a facility out there. So when I think about kind of what what are those risks that I'm gonna be taking, just getting on a greater scale as we get larger and larger, it's like, hey, I'm gonna sign, put a deposit of a hundred plus thousand dollars. Is that the right decision? Is that the right facility? So I think it's just the, the general kind of risk taking. We applaud you mm -hmm. and all your success so far and, and you're a trailblazer and I think you're gonna have more success in the future. Thank you. Yes. I appreciate it. Congrats. Yeah. Thanks, take care.